Hey. Hey. Things are amiss. <laughs> things are things are amiss. <laughs> Jen was just talking about how it was so Friday the thirteenth for me. <laughs> Oh, wow, the tables have turned. <laughs> the turns tables. <laughs> it's not Kachow this season. It's the the Jonas Brothers reference. Uh-huh. I guess you'll have to stay tuned to see what else comes along as we continue. Um, but hello. Hello. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Field Guide to Healing, Season 2, Episode 2. Good. Yep, yep. All the twos, <laughs> all the peace signs. Um, Just tossing them out there. Yeah. So for those of you who might just be tuning in or for those of you who have been here before, um, our first episode was on self-attunement. So beginning to see yourself through the lens of, you know, attuning to yourself. Uh now we are kind of transitioning into our next part of this series, which I think still really um, is connected and also falls under the umbrella of authenticity, which is our theme for this season, for those of you who are keeping tabs on that. Uh, and our episode today is, is what, Jen? Aligning with your core values, the foundation mm. of authenticity. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So that is a lot. Those are many words. Um, maybe <laughs> some of you know what these things are. Maybe some of you even have a relationship with your core values. Maybe you are kind of figuring out what they are. Wherever you are on that path, I think this is a really good uh, like foundational conversation on how to begin getting into a better relationship with these things or getting a better understanding of, you know, yourself through values. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, uh, values, self-attunement, yeah. these things, like what, yeah. what about them, I guess, do we, do we want to chat about today? Yeah, well, I think it's important to start by saying how values and self-attunement are so closely related. Um, so when we talk about self-attunement, a lot of times people are like, I want to make sure that I'm aligned with myself. I want to um, be doing what's right for me. I was like, okay, cool. But how do you know what's right for you? Um, so when we talk about values, it's not that something is right or wrong. It's that something feels juicy, ooey gooey. Like the, when you, you know, see that first bite of that fresh out of the oven brownie, that's the feeling that we're going for when we're figuring out what values we want to align ourselves with. That's the goal. Um, and sometimes the ooey gooey is not always going to feel like that. It could also feel like, oh my gosh, I have to make this really hard decision, but I know what's going to be right for me and my higher self by making sure that I'm doing what aligns with what I know will feel right, even if the right now feels hard. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely holding space for living in alignment with your values might not always feel good and it might feel effortful at times to go against the established grain uh at times thing. most times i mean i don't know i think there's times where it feels like a fuck yeah and there's times where it feels like a fuck no uh mm. <laughs> and what i what i mean by that is like maybe there comes a time when living in alignment with your values doesn't feel like a task it's just who you are and it's how you lead your life mm. um and again, that might mean that sometimes it feels unpleasant, but I don't think that it always has to be unpleasant mm -hmm. in my experience, in my experience. When you said comes a time, you reminded me of one of my favorite Neil Young songs. Uh, comes a time when you're drifting, comes a time when you settle down. Um, but the whole point of the song is that like the world keeps spinning round and it's okay if you fail. It's okay if you fall, you gotta go for it and give yourself the chance. Um, so it's like being brave and like knowing what's right for you, going for it. And if you fall, that's okay. Like you'll get through it. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm. So, but that being said, of course, we say it like, whatever, for therapists, if you're going to do it, it's going to be fine. Neil Young says it, the sage, amazing man that is Neil Young. Um, but through today, we're hoping to really 
bring this into focus as something that everyone can approach. Um, so I think a good way to start that would be by defining values in the lens of self-attunement. Um, so values are the internal compass that helps us navigate life's decisions and challenges. Through self-attunement, we become more aware of these core principles that resonate with our authentic selves. By listening to our inner voice and paying attention to what feels right or important to us, we can identify and clarify our values. Um, mm. So I, as I was reading that, I realized that this is the definition of values. It has the word values in it a bunch. Um, so our values can be intrinsic and extrinsic. So intrinsic means internal, only applying to you, who you are as a person, no, no other factors. And extrinsic is the external world and external benefits. So for example, um, I can value hard work and I can value wealth. Hard work is an internal value. Wealth is an external. So intrinsic, extrinsic. Um, yeah. And it can be kind of hard to know, like, what's for me? What's for the world around me? What do I think is expected of me? And again, chipping away at that, figuring out, like, when you're attuned to yourself, who does it belong to? You, society, community, the world. Yeah. Am I missing mm -hmm. anything from that? Mm. I think what came to mind for me when the words like identifying and clarifying came up, um, cause like identifying is being able to like look at something and figure out what it is, like put a name to it, like, Oh, this is what that is. And clarifying I think is the act of like tuning or fine tuning or, you know, making clear what something is so i think they're very similar but i think one is like identifying i see as like active and coming upon like being like oh this is my value i'm identifying this as a value or as clarifying a value is maybe you held something once clearly and it felt like it was a value but as time moved forward you were able to clarify that that wasn't your value or maybe it wasn't mm -hmm the value you thought it was or maybe you know it's like fine tuning it's a t that attunement um on either end of both of those things the identifying and the clarifying and i think what's important about both of these are their action items obviously they're both there's effort involved in identifying and clarifying something but there's movement so either way you need to be having some movement in order to do these things in order to reconcile and understand them which falls in line with the you know the neil young reference of like sometimes you're going to fail but sometimes failure is a necessary component to clarifying and identifying what your values are it means trying something and seeing that it doesn't feel good or it didn't feel right or it didn't meet whatever goal you have because goals and values can kind of again be in a relation with another one another which we will define as we move forward but that's kind of where my brain uh settled as you read those definitions mm. okay very cool moving movement moving through um the something that's really important that you just reminded me of too is like the it's a guidance that inner knowing being able to tap into that it gives us that guiding light toward what feels right for us um so in trying to like attune to ourselves and figuring out what our values are and living by them we are giving ourselves permission for that inner joy to be expressed and followed um and it's like we're giving ourselves the opportunity to learn how to turn toward that inner joy, that inner light, whenever we can. Does that makes sense. I guess my question is, does it have to be, does that guiding light have to be conjoined with joy? Hmm. Because like, could Same a guiding more. light, yeah. I'm like, because I'm, well, again, duality is, it's where I find myself residing. Yeah. It's my, my, my go-to is, 
can a guiding light not be an unpleasant feeling? I feel like unpleasant experiences. So like, yeah, joy can be guiding. Like if we find joy and sparkle in something, I think that's also giving you insight. But like, think about when you're exercising, when we're out in the world, we're working our muscles. Oftentimes the exercises that feel the most unpleasant, the ones that we don't want to do are the ones that are challenging our muscles and strengthening them in ways in which we ourselves wouldn't seek out. The same with unpleasant feelings. We're not seeking these things out typically. We're oftentimes moving away from them. But there's that moment when you move toward or when you allow that inner light to be shined on that moment, even if it's an unpleasant experience where like you, that permission, to me, that's a joyful experience to give that permission. Um, But as I'm describing it and I'm tuning into what that feeling is, it's also like anxious excitement, nervousness, butterflies. Like there's all of this is like a... The word that comes to my mind is ambiguous. Mm. Like that's what I'm thinking. This like, this intangible unknown but like on the forefront of something like the precipice Mm. you know what I mean like that uncertainty that like fluidity that moment of the light shining on the thing and not knowing yeah quite yet or maybe you do maybe you do maybe the light is the knowing wow I'm imagining a lighthouse like ooh, ooh, but wait (laughs) Let's hear it. The ambiguity that you're feeling, though, like, let's sit with, okay, so, like, if the shining light is the knowing, the ambiguity, the anxiousness, all of that tension, that moment of, like, like, tension before the release is the moment of, do I trust myself? (laughs) So, like, if we're able to lean into that, that uncomfortable feeling, that unpleasant moment of, like, do I trust this knowing guiding light Mm -hmm. do i want to step into that ambiguous unknown for the opportunity for clarity or identifying of myself for knowing Mm -hmm. so viewers that's where you come into the question before we move (laughs) on in this conversation do you want to step into that ambiguity, like that ambiguity with Jen and I today? Like, do you want to, you know, hang out with that guiding light, maybe get to know what's inside of you a little bit more. And that's something that is a personal choice, whether you want to like move into that or not. Uh, But as we do move through that today, Jen and I will be here holding the space, hopefully, Mm -hmm. you know, giving you some insight some guidance some tools and hopefully a little bit of you know guiding light as you exit oh my gosh okay so I also want to add um it feels like it's a spotlight this guiding light when it like it's like that ambiguous unknown and like whether or not you want to trust yourself so I'm imagining like you lose power you have a flashlight or you're in the woods, right? Anywhere where it's very dark, you have this flashlight and it's the only light around you. So you have a knowing of like only directly what's in front of you, but there's still a lot of that fear around you because there's so much unknown. So let's swap out the flashlight for a candle. Hmm. Gentle, warm, soft light, relaxation, holding space. We're only gonna approach what feels approachable. Does it need to feel good? Does it need to feel bad? Does it need to feel anything? All we're asking is, can it be approached? Can you offer that warm light toward this ambiguous feeling? Yeah. Okay. Thought I'd offer y'all some gentleness toward it as we step in. Um, So I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that we should preface or we want to preface before moving on, transitioning into the next part of our conversation. Um, um, so I think the only thing that comes to my mind before we really start getting into like the values work is, you know, highlighting that self attunement from the first episode really does allow a really great basis for this conversation as Jen and I really did 
pause and discuss in detail what that self-attunement process might look like. So if you are here and you're feeling like you're missing something or like you want more information before moving into this conversation, I would suggest giving episode one a listen. It's on Spotify and YouTube. If you want to watch the video, you'll see our faces. Hello. Um, But yeah, uh, I would say coming into this space with lots of grace uh, and curiosity if it can be cultivated. Um, and values work is an ongoing thing. It is not a destination. It is like an overarching type of life journey uh, that we all get yeah. to be on. It's like a navigating Maybe. system that you get to like cultivate for yourself. It's like almost like you're making a map. It's um, like you're making a field guide for yourself. <gasps> oh my gosh. This is, this is <laughs> crazy. Oh my God. <laughs> So yeah, um, let's navigate objectively <laughs> using what matters most to us as individuals. That's that's yeah. the goal of today's topic. So yeah. let's dive in. Yeah. It's be a really cool time for like some sick like transition music. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the transition music. That's that's the stuff. <laughs> that's the um, stuff. So uh, we wanted to start off kind of by explaining what values work entails. And I really like this worksheet from Drexel University. It's from their counseling center. Uh, and they kind of define or give this really cool example of goals versus values, because I think while these things have a relationship to one another, they're not the same thing. Um, so I'm just going to read that like verbatim from their worksheet that will also be linked below if anyone's interested in it. It is a really great values exercise and it's been done very well. Um, so it starts off just being like, let's clarify our values. So like, that's an important step to values work is beginning to uncover some of what our things are. So maybe take a moment to think for yourself as I read this. Um, and I could also like share this if people want to see it, but I am just going to be reading it. So, uh, deep down inside, what is important to you? What do you want your life to stand for? What sort of qualities do you want to cultivate as a person? How do you want to be in relationship with others? Values are our heart's deepest desires for the ways that we want to interact with and relate to the world, other people, and ourselves. They are the leading principles that guide us and motivate us as we move through life. Values reflect what you want to do and how you want to do it. They are about how you want to behave towards your friends, your families, yourself, your environment, and your work, and so on. So I really want to highlight before moving on that values reflect what we want to do, the what and the how we want to do it. So taking into consideration, maybe what are some of the things you want to be doing and how would you do that? So the next part of this definition is values are not the same as goals. Values involve ongoing action. They are like directions we keep moving in, whereas goals are what we want to achieve along the way. Mm. So that makes sense. So for an example, a value is like heading west. A goal is like the river or the mountain or the valley that we want to aim to cross while we travel in the direction of west. So goals are the things that we can cross off or achieve while our values are ongoing. So no matter how far west we go, we're never actually reaching it because the value is just going west. It's not the goal. It's not like we're stopping at some point. Mm, you know what I love about this? It's reminding me of season one, self-efficacy, uh, especially with the conversation of do I trust myself? Because when we set goals without values, it's very easy for those goals to fall to the wayside. We don't believe in ourselves to achieve them. Also, why set a goal if there's like nowhere else to go with <sighs> Yeah, yeah, where is okay. there? So an example of this is if you want to be a loving, caring, and supportive partner, that is our value. Mm -hmm. We want to be that. Mm -hmm. So 
that involves ongoing action. So what that means is like, it, for example, in contrast, say you want to get married. That's a goal that can be crossed off or achieved, which is not the same as wanting to be a loving partner because a loving partner is a consistent showing up. It is an ongoing endeavor. It's going West. Mm -hmm. <laughs> married is a goal where we stop there because you can get married and that's like, that could be, that is what it is. Yeah. I mean, did you watch Love is Blind UK? No. I did because I love Love is Blind. <laughs> um, and the one couple, they immediately fell in love. Like they were the first ones to get engaged in the pods and they saw each other and it was an absolutely like, amazing, adorable whirlwind to watch them go through and they seemed so like settled towards the end. They were an obvious yes at the altar. And then when it came time for the reunion, they divorced because the one partner, as soon as they got married, wasn't willing to put in all of the effort to maintain the marriage. So he went from being the one who was like always there, present, laughing, making sure that like his spouse was having a wonderful time and felt cared for. Um, he just was staying, they, he didn't move to her city, even though like he said that he could do that. Um, he would barely talk to her, right? So like all of the effort after the goal was achieved was gone. So he was no longer the loving partner because he achieved the goal. So he was, by getting married, he was acting in a way he thought he had to, the way society teaches you to act in a way to achieve the goal of marriage but not in the way that aligned with who he is as a partner, how he can actually show up in a relationship. Yeah, he was not, it was not from a values-based, because if it was values-based, that behavior would be ongoing even after the marriage, because the value would be aligned with being a partner who communicates, being a partner who shows up, being that present person. Um, yeah. But his goal took over the whatever values this person might have, we don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. well, even the, well, the thing too is like it took over his personal values. So we have values at all different levels, which we will get into afterwards of talking about this current example or this current situation that Ronnie's outlining for us. Um, so I'm going to take a step back here and allow Ronnie to, to go on. Oh, that, was, that was pretty much it. Uh, just talking about values being ongoing action versus goals being things that are just achieved. So like another example that can be helpful is if you want a better job, that's a goal. You want to get a better job. It's not like something that you're forever going to hold on to. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Uh, but once you have that kind of a thing, so you get the job, you've achieved the better goal. Uh, mm -hmm. but if you are someone who your values are, I want to apply myself at work. I want to contribute. I want to be a team player. I want to be engaged. I want to be present. Those are values which involve ongoing, consistent action as you move through yeah. your role as that person, like your job. Yeah. And like, when you think about like career development, um, a lot of times people are posed with the question of, do you want to build a career or do you want a job? Um, so it's, like the idea of like, I want a lifelong endeavor that I'm working toward rather than a singular experience at work. Yeah. 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 So that's all for this worksheet. I'm going to invite Very anyone cool. who is curious about this to go ahead and just take a look at it, whether it be by yourself, with friends, with a therapist. Um, it really breaks it down and allows you to begin looking into different areas of your life. So work relationships, uh, personal growth, leisure, and really start outlining how you show up in these places and then continuing yeah. to unfold. So take a gander at that. It will be linked. It is, uh, yeah, it's a nice, nice one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to be using it. Those questions that you asked, which were on that worksheet are like so provocative, you know, got me going and I'm excited. Yeah. To, um, maybe like, Jen more. and I will, uh, do a little, uh, fill out for you guys and go over it at some point for all y'all yeah. folks. You can do it alongside of us too, if you want. Check yeah, definitely. Some stuff coming. Yeah, um, cool. Yeah, so um, back to the different levels of our values. Um, so there's this thing called circles of influence, the jargon that is used in the values identification and clarification world. And I'm going to put it on the screen for everyone to be able to take a look at because I think it's a really cool visual the way that the different levels kind of like hug around the self. So hang on in there for me. Alrighty, here we go. <laughs> okay, so we have ourself, right? Um, we are in the center of this circle and there are four different levels. So it's self, 
And then we branch out a circle around the self as family. And then a circle around the family and self as friends. And the circle around self, family, and friends is society. Um, so these are only like four, three levels of influence on oneself. Um, and the whole purpose of being able to frame what your values are in this way is to say, okay, I know that for me, let's say family, exercise, politics, and socializing are huge for me. And then you go on and you think, okay, well, actually for my family, it's those things. For society, it's those four things. Do I actually align with all four of those things is basically the idea here. Um, and it also can highlight areas of where, um, wow, I actually feel some like awkwardness when I'm around my family. I feel a lot more comfortable around my friends. And you can see that your values might line up a lot more closely with your friendships. And with your family, there can be some clashing values. So there's points where you turn away or turn off parts of yourself where you're around certain family members so that you can feel more comfortable. And really, you're not actually feeling more comfortable. You're feeling out of alignment with yourself. Um, yeah. So with that, um, I think we can jump right into our core values. What do you think, Ronnie? What do you mean? Well, as we're talking about this, right, it's the word values. And like we've been throwing some examples out there. It's kind of just like swirling around. It feels like um, they're all around. Mm -hmm. You can just like kind of like grab and pick some, but I don't really know what to do with them. Kind of just mm -hmm. holding them all. Um, so I think yeah. it would be cool if we get some actual examples of what core yeah. values could look like. Because we can value so many different things. Um, but when it comes to having core values, I say core because they can be the ones that most align with who we are as people. That's how we're going to make decisions. That's how we're going to objectively say, like, what do I need to take into consideration when I'm trying to figure out who I am, what matters to me, when I'm trying to make this big decision that can impact the rest of my life, when I'm feeling like something was wrong that I did, like this feel like something is out of, out of order. I can think about what my core values are and figure out, oh, okay, well, that's why. Or if a close friend of yours that you've had your entire life there's been like weird feelings there. Something's just off. You say, okay, well, have my values changed? Have their values changed? Are we not lining up with each other anymore? So it can really guide you. It can be like a good compass to know what your core values are for every area of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's lots of values. I think if people look this up, you will find many lists, many um, different, you know, pictures of what this might look like. Uh, Jen has just shared on the screen from Therapist Aid um, a small list, a very small list, in my opinion, of uh, values. I like uh, Brene Brown has a list of values that is more exhaustive of this. I would have like, I would say, you know, two to four times the amount of words. Yeah. Um, so like Absolutely. giving yourself some space, like before we did this episode, I sat out and I wrote my um, circles of influence because I was just curious because I was like, I don't know how to fill this out. I'm more concrete than this. Like I don't, I was looking at it uh, <laughs> from all over the place. Um, and I think that you might find you have a lot more values than what some of these, like they'll like list one to 10 here, uh, yeah. one being the most important and 10 being the least important. Um, you might feel like that's a lot of words. You might feel like that's not enough words. I think it kind of depends on how you embody or envision your values list. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to encourage you as well to challenge yourself if you feel like you have more than 10. I would even say more than eight. Um, try, to, try to titrate that down and figure out, like, do some of my values overlap with one another? Is there one that can encompass a few? And I need to prioritize which ones are most important because how can I make decisions based off of 20 things? It can still be very confusing, um, even if those things are all very, very important. So I'm just looking at the list right in front of me. Um, I'm going to use myself as an example. So spirituality, creativity, and relaxation. If I were to say that I, like if someone told me I had to pick between those three, the way that I would narrow this list down would be, okay, so 
when I am in a, when I'm practicing my spirituality, when I'm respecting that for myself, um, I am feeling very aligned with myself. I'm feeling very relaxed and at ease. When I'm being creative, I feel like I'm expressing myself. I'm feeling like I am tapping into my spiritual self and I'm creating something in a way where I'm feeling aligned and very relaxed, very like not an effortful, but beautiful way to connect with myself. And then when I look at relaxation, I can say, okay, the way that I relax is through spiritual practices, being creative, spending time with my, my loved ones, etc. right? So it seems like um, relaxation can encompass spirituality and creativity. However, I feel like that diminishes the importance of spirituality in my life. And when I'm being a spiritual person, I'm a relaxed person. I'm more able to connect with the people around me and I'm able to be more into with my creative self. So I would choose spirituality. Yeah, I, I definitely see that. I know for myself, like um, uh, my brain works in such the way that like I think different values might apply to different situations. So I wouldn't have to look at every single one of my like 20 values if I'd had yeah. them. Um, Wait, tell us how tell us how you would approach it um like so for me I wouldn't necessarily get rid of relaxation for spirituality because I feel like they can be similar in the things that they offer and also they can be different um but again, like, I think these are the kinds of things where we can get kind of befuddled with the nuance of trying to put ourselves in like, okay, this is the box and here's here's how that looks. I think life can just be a little bit more fluid than that. Uh, so for me, um, like when I look at my list, I had like nine things listed underneath at least just values for myself. Um and I'm happy to list some of what they are. So I put humor, accountability, authenticity, creativity, diversity, honesty, community, balance and well-being and accessibility. Uh, and I think all of these things have something in common with one another, like with one another. However, they might not all need to be identified in a situation where I might be considering my values. So for example, if I am considering honesty or like accountability, someone might say that these are the same things, but I think that for me, honesty and accountability, yeah, they, they definitely have a relationship to one another without a doubt. Um, but for myself, accountability is different from honesty because I try to be an honest person in general. That's a value I hold as being an honest person. I don't like to fib and lie and like be covert. Um, so that's like an in general thing, but then if there's a moment where something happens, the accountability comes into place of if I mess something up or if there's something that I've done that's caused a transgression or something to happen, accountability is a value because I, to myself, have the value of I'm also an honest person and I'm an accountable person, which is an action item for me. So if I have done something that has harmed or just inadvertently did something that might like, for instance, at work, I think I left the door unlocked once one of us did. There was a couple of us in the office and the door had been unlocked. And I immediately texted our owner and, and said, Hey, like, I think it could have been me. I was there at the office and took accountability for that because of those two values having an intersection. So where I see it is I like how Jen's going about it to, for the simplicity of narrowing it down and titrating because in some moments we need that. And I also feel as though if you notice you have more than eight to 10 words coming up, that's okay because we are such infinite beings. It's okay for there to be more than one word to synthesize what your value means to you. Like for me, mm -hmm. I think I need both parts of that because that's what works for my, for my value system. Yeah. I love that. Like the intersection, that was such a great way to describe it, like to encapsulate the importance of honoring more than like the, so we have the core values, but then we have the ones that intersect with those core values that can help us balance ourselves and check in with ourselves and guide us towards where we're hoping to go. Um, yeah. So like I was thinking like respect and fairness, like I can be a respectful person, but a lot of times people who really value respect, um, if you're a, a people pleaser, 
or an anxious person, you really put the respect towards others above respecting yourself. But if you have the value of fairness intersecting with that, you can say, okay, well, if I value fairness, I want to make sure that I'm treating people fairly. And I can also have that self-respect towards myself that others will treat me with fairness as well. So being yeah. able to notice there's like ooh, discomfort in a situation of unfairness and I'm feeling disrespected or vice versa. Like, so it can help you figure out how you're feeling, why you're feeling it, and then know where to go next. Yeah. 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 So like, let these things look like whatever works for you. Like Jen's approach is not wrong. My approach is not wrong. Neither is right. They've just what works for us as individual people. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. Uh, so definitely allow yourself the opportunity to lean into what these things look like for you in each category of whatnot. And maybe look at the differences or similarities between a each of those categories as well, like Jen had stated, to give yourself an opportunity to then reassess, is this a me value? Is this a shared value? Is this even a value that I share? Like, mm -hmm. at all. I think um, just as a quick one, religion, the United States is regarded as a Catholic country. Um, in God we trust, right? That's on our, it's like woven on into the money, the concrete foundation. However, that is something that, I mean, our country is so diverse now. Not, I don't even know if Catholicism would be the predominant religion on our next census. Nope. Um, also, Catholicism in the traditional stance goes against a lot of different identities. Um, it is a, it's something that has also created shame for a lot of people. So while um, it is something that could be a value extrinsically, once you really titrate it down, you can see like, I don't have to own this. This does not need to be a part of me. Um, and that's just one example. So I'm not saying like down with religion, I think it's beautiful to be connected to a higher power. Um, but what I am saying is it can be a very invalidating experience for a lot of people and being able to see the circles of influence can help you understand where points of dissonance can be within yourself. And um, you can see like, okay, there's external factors that are imposing on me that I can find ways to tap into my inner strengths, my inner core values to fully express and align with myself. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I feel like that really encapsulates what those circles of influence look like. Um, I wanted to recommend to anybody who might be um, really trying to examine what their like pre-programming is or like their default settings that have kind of been put into them through their families, through the societies that we live in, through just like educational systems, et cetera, like where you live has an impact on some of the ideologies that we might hold on to or some of the value systems that we might be holding on to. Uh, for agreements, I believe like the first section of that book really goes into depth about the societal programming that we take in and allows reflection on how to begin looking at that and assessing what parts of that are you and what parts of that are something that has been kind of programmed into you. And I always really like this saying that Queen Herbie has in one of her songs where she talks about some of these thoughts that come up are like programming that's working its way out. Yeah. So giving yourself space for grace that if you notice values coming up that don't feel in alignment, that it's okay. And that they are working their way out of your system the same way that they worked their way in. And this work that you're doing right now, listening to this podcast, even considering what your values might be, allows you to kind of reprogram or override some of those stories and narratives or values that you might be holding on to that just don't feel aligned with you anymore. Absolutely. It's like um, in cognitive behavioral therapy, automatic negative thoughts, um, negative self-judgments that kind of pop out of nowhere at you. Um, or they're like repeating themes in your mind. They are showing you that there's a, something that you're experiencing that, again, it's like turning that, that warm, soft candlelight toward it. You can say, okay, something's going on that's making me not agree with something in my life. Um, so it doesn't mean that these thoughts are true. It doesn't mean that they are going to have to weigh heavily on you. 
there are ways and we're offering these ways to you. They were a little candle to help you examine. <laughs> I'm almost imagining like um there's I don't know what movie again, Disney Channel is coming at me. Um, but there's like the candles <laughs> like floating in the pool in someone's backyard. I feel like it had to have been high school musical again, because I don't know in what other setting. Anyway, totally getting off topic here. Um <laughs> but <laughs> just like gentle gentle warmness can mm. you can offer the gentle warmth to those ugly, icky, nasty feeling things that come toward us and we can say okay well I know deep down what matters most to me and I'm going to give those things a chance to shine through yeah mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, and as always slow is fast like there is no timeline on this values are an overarching like we've said these are something that there's no goal here there's no destination that you're trying to get to really truly the the wonderful thing about values is just the opportunity to be with yourself assess reassess notice take in that information and the data that you're learning from your lived experiences and allow it to propel you into that direction continuing on the trajectory towards yourself um so yeah that's all of all of that <laughs> yeah all of um, those beautiful things so what can this actually like look like putting it into daily practice so let's say um i i know what my five top ones are my top values what do i do now um Mm. my advice pick one value ask yourself what can i do to live by this value today 30 second yeah. practice when you wake up or whenever you think of it throughout the day or if you're feeling not like yourself okay wait i identify these five values maybe i can try to live by one and see if it makes any difference mm. what might that look like jen like what like could you give us a little example of like picking a value and what that could translate to into like an action yeah definitely Uh, So let's say the value that you choose for the day is love. That can look like sending a text to a couple people saying, hey, I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you so much for being in my life. Um, It can look like allowing yourself to spend the time that your body needs putting on lotion. Yeah. Yeah. Giving yourself more time to pick out an outfit, like be more intentional, like, giving that love to yourself and how you want to present yourself for the day. Yeah. And so all of these are really nice proactive behaviors, like either opening up your day and picking a value and like being like, I'm going to try and live this today. Or it might be like Jen said, noticing a shift in your personal energy. And like, again, turning to your values and thinking, how might I be able to lean into these things to support me? Uh, but I also want to hold space for the retroactive learning that a lot of us just have. Like, it's just really normal. It's superhuman to learn through experience. And I want to hold space for that. Uh, yeah. We can't always learn without context, without experiencing, without uh, structure in some way. And like, again, let's hold space for it being fluid. But we are allowed to retroactively, like, maybe take a pause. We've talked about check-ins. Maybe at the end of the week, you write down your five little values. If you have, you know, been able to get to five, maybe you write down the one that you found that you have and you reflect on the week prior or the month prior or even just like however it insert time and assess, does this feel like I was living according to blank? Does this feel like I was leaning into this value when this happened? And what that can then do is gives you the data of, no, it doesn't feel that way to me, or yes, it did. And from whatever answer you get is, how? How did I show up? What and how? We come back to those questions. What was the behavior I was doing? How did I feel when doing it? Or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And what that gives you is just a little bit of insight. So then maybe you can do some of that proactive 
steps of leaning into your values and being like, oh, well, I can insert this again, or I can insert this for the first time and see how it feels different. Um, But let yourself have both ways of learning, like proactive, reactive. Um, Yeah. What's coming up for you, Jen? It's making me think of last last, uh, week's episode where we were talking about the importance of like evaluating ourselves without over-examining ourselves. Um, and I think this is this tool I love, especially because knowing what your values are, when we are in that place of over-examining ourselves and kind of bullying ourselves, we can say, hang on a second. It makes sense that I feel so upset right now. I was not acting like myself. I was acting unaccording to my values. And I can reorient myself to what matters to me in future experiences. Mm. Uh, And this also brings me to, again, the four agreements they talk about. And I'm not going to give it all away because there's a lot of information in there. But I also, and maybe we'll do a book club on this book because it's not that long of a read. And Jen and I have already both read it. But they talk about if someone harms you in some way. And again, let's hold that very loosely. We're not talking about someone who's like, grievanced us in a really not good way we're going to separate that so just like something more casual Mm -hmm. are we going to punish them more than once for that probably not like contingent on the fact that like maybe they they apologize they're accountable etc we have a beautiful ending right cool we can move forward or not again doesn't have to look like moving forward but we're not going to continue punishing this person for that crime Mm-hmm. How Why many not? times, because the prime has been served, the service, they have done the action item, hopefully, of the apologizing, the accountability, the changed behavior, or whatever. Like, again, I haven't defined what that is. Like, let that be whatever it is for you. But what we do see a lot of is people punishing themselves over and over again for something that they might have done a long time ago. Like, think about, mm-hmm. like, we do something embarrassing. Uh, it cringe. It comes back to our mind. We're like, oh, God, it was so weird. I was so gross. Yeah. We're like punishing ourselves for this moment of like just being alive, point blank, period. Mm-hmm. Whereas if it were someone else, we probably don't even remember that cringe thing or that weird thing or whatever that infraction might be because it's it's since passed. There has been time to move forward. But with ourselves there's like a pun there's this like gluttony for self punishment for self shame a little bit so like jen said when we find ourselves leaning into the over examination the over punishment the over assessing of ourselves i want you to call in that reorientation that gentle light that warm candle and give yourself some fucking grace Mm -hmm. because It's so human. And you can't move forward if you continue to punish yourself for that moment of humanness. When we look back and we're like, wow, I should have done better. I could have done better. Why wasn't I? Why didn't I? Why? Because you didn't know better. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know what you know now. And if you you did know better, hold on. It's okay. It's okay (laughs) if you knew better. Because you're giving yourself the opportunity to grow. Attacking yourself over and over again, punishing yourself, pushing yourself down. There's no room for you, your true self, to break through. Nope. Step over. That shame, we're not saying it's going to be gone right away, right? Again, like Ronnie was saying, slow is fast. Um, But allow your true self to shine through. You've met yourself. Trust yourself right? Orient yourself to that trusting, that like, that moment, that ambiguity, right? What would it be like? You know what it's like to shit on yourself. (laughs) What would happen? (laughs) What would happen if we gave ourselves the chance to just see maybe what I value actually is who I am? Crazy (sighs) idea. I know. (laughs) I know. What What if what's important to me makes me, me? What if yeah. I am a loyal person? What if I am an honest person and a loving person? 
Yeah, and I also want to hold yeah. space for like Jen, like you're saying like it's okay if you know better because these things about ourself that you're loving, that you're kind, that these exist even maybe in moments when we're not acting that way. We could still yeah. have the dialect of I am kind and I could be shitty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we're all assholes sometimes. And what you'll find is with time, it is easier to fumble because you realize it's an opportunity to assess. You realize it's an opportunity to come back to the drawing boards, to sit with yourself, to have that team meeting and be like, what happened here? <laughs> like, why, why did I choose asshole when I could have choosed grace? I could have like, what happened here? What was going on? And like, sometimes it might, it could be something like very overt. Maybe you didn't eat enough that day. Maybe you had a bad, like a bad work call. Maybe something happened in your life that, you know, set the scale so that you weren't able, you weren't accessing that self energy. Mm. And it's an yeah, opportunity. Meet, your, meet yourself on neutral ground. Yeah. Yeah. Meet yeah. Yourself stop interrogating on yourself. <laughs> yeah. Why, why are we coming into it? Like you heckin bratty <laughs> bitch get your get your crud together you stink right that's not it's not productive would you speak to your dog like that actually the way that Maybe. i say it <laughs> the way i say it <laughs> but really um like would you it's like, ha like would you respond well to someone else externally from you talking like that probably not and like we when we think about parts work we can like hold space for this this energy showing up for these parts of us showing up because they think mm. they're doing something they think they're helping us and it might not be the way that we're most receptive it might not be what we need in order to cultivate that safety that space of warmth to reflect mm -hmm. yeah so neutral ground meet yourself on neutral ground Take away the expectation that you ought to have known better. Take away the expectation that you need to be performing at your best all mm. the time. And also like values check. Like if we notice we're out of a like out of alignment and we fumble, it's reaffirming our values. It's reaffirming yes. oh the fact that it's like, oh duh. Like I I live like this for like I, I follow these things because they are how I want to be existing in the world. Like this is who I want to be as a human. And that was not how I want to be. It happens. And check in with those circles of influence. Is that where you learn to act in the way that you don't agree with? Yeah. Who talked to you like that? Who 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 in your life has cussed at you or belittled you or yelled at you? when trying to teach you something. Mm -hmm. Could you could uh, you be a safe person relying on the values that are most important to you rather than the defensive behaviors that you learned from said jerks in your life? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, so all of that to say, we don't wanna get yes. off into different tangents because we can. Oh, they're uh, just gonna keep coming. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry. We have a separate channel for that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep an eye out for that. But I think, you know, we're holding space for the dialect, the both and. And as we move forward, I think we are at the point in this conversation where it's time to let you all marinate. We're going to give you that night. We gave you this beautiful glaze. We put you in a bowl. We gave you a little smooch. We're putting you back into the fridge. We'll be back. We'll check on you. <laughs> see how you're doing. See how it's soaking in. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I just, you know, <laughs> marinating items of food really connects. Are you, with me. are you marinating a steak or a cake? <laughs> not a cake. Definitely not a cake. <laughs> you, we glazed it. <laughs> yeah, like think about like a nice Italian uh, dressing, a robust Italian. Yeah, I th I'm thinking more like a honeyed ham. <laughs> nah, it's, see, it's I don't really, I don't like a honey ham. <laughs> Maybe like a, a rum ham. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're talking. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. For all of you who watch Always Sunny in Philadelphia, if you know, you know. If you don't, <laughs> it's a very specific <laughs> sense of humor, so be warned. Um, moving on into the conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> 
So for all of you here, yes. this is ongoing work. You don't have to try and do all of it in quotes, because again, what is even all of it? It's just an ongoing mm. self-discovery. Um, anytime you need to be reminded, anytime you need a gentle hand to encourage you through this journey, come back here, give it a listen. We'll be here holding our little candles mm -hmm. uh, and see what it feels like. See, try some of the stuff that Jen recommended. Try some of the things that I did. Don't see if something works for you that hasn't been mentioned. Um, if you find anything or you do anything on your own, please share with us. We always love to hear how people are figuring out their own field guide, figuring out their own discovery on themselves. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Ooh, so as we bid you all a farewell, remember self-awareness, dare I say self-attunement, <laughs> it's your compass guiding you back to your center. Understanding your own rhythms is a true strength to help you navigate your emotions. Mm -hmm. So join us next time as we dive deeper into the humor, human experience. Until then, breathe, find balance, and know that you are not alone on this journey. Love this episode? Share it with a friend who wants to ride the waves of awareness with us. Stay attuned for our attunement series on YouTube and Instagram. Thanks for tuning in. Stay mindful, stay present, and keep exploring that extraordinary world within. And until then, catch you on the trails. Catch you on the trails. <laughs> Episode two.